How to decorate a fence. Put on safety goggles and a respiratory mask. Anytime you cut or drill wood, wear safety gear. Cover your eyes and mouth to shield yourself from wood fragments and dust. Avoid wearing gloves or loose clothing, since these items can get caught under a saw blade. Mark where you will cut the boards for the planter. Create the planter out of a 6 in times 8 in, 15 cm times 20 cm, board. Measure along the length of the board with a tape measure, marking it with a pencil. You will need to cut three sections approximately 5.5 in times 23 in, 14 cm times 58 cm, big. Cut two smaller pieces 5.5 in times 5.5 in, 14 cm times 14 cm, big. A pine board from a home improvement store works well. If you give a store associate the measurements, they can usually cut the board for you. You can adjust the measurements to change the size of the planter. Cut the boards to size according to your measurements. Clamp the boards to a workbench and strap on your safety gear. Then, operate a jigsaw to slice through the boards. You should end up with five different boards for the planter. Drill drainage holes in the planter. Select one of the larger boards to be used as the bottom of the planter. It will need drainage holes so water can escape the planter. Use a 8 in, 0.95 cm, drill bit to make a series of holes along the length of the board. Repeat this along the board's opposite edge. Make the holes about 1 in, 2.5 cm, away from the edges of the board. Space out the holes, placing them about 5 in, 13 cm, apart. Screw the boards together to form a box. Start with the bottom of the planter, laying it flat on your workbench. Assemble the box by placing the longer boards you cut earlier beside the bottom board's bigger sides. Set the smaller pieces near the smaller sides. Screw the boards together using 1 4 in, 3.2 cm, screws. Place the screws on the corners of the smaller boards. Keep them 1 in, 2.5 cm, from the board's sides. You may wish to pre-drill holes to ensure the wood doesn't splinter. You can also nail the boards together or use a wood glue labeled for exterior usage. Drill pilot holes through the back of the planter. Select one of the planter's longer sides. Drill a series of five holes, spacing them about 5 in, 13 cm, apart. These will be used to attach the planter to the fence. Remember to keep the holes away from the planter's edges. Create pilot holes in the fence. First, figure out where you want the planter to hang. Then, use a tape measure to mark where you will drill the holes. Make a hole approximately every 5 in, 13 cm, along the fence, 5 holes total. Pre-drill your fence to reduce the risk of cracking and splintering. You can install a mounting board first. Screw it to the fence before hanging the planter. It makes the planter easier to remove later. You can also buy brackets from a home improvement store. Screw them to the fence and the planter. Hang the planter box by screwing it to the fence. Line up the holes on the back of the box with the holes on the fence. Insert a 1 4 in, 3.2 cm, screw in each hole. Tighten it with a cordless screwdriver to secure it to the fence. Then, you can fill your planter with spice plants or colorful plants that brighten up the fence. Check that the planter is on straight by placing a level over it. You may need to adjust the screws to straighten it. Painting a fence. Wear protective goggles and a respirator mask. If you use a power washer to clean the fence, put on protective goggles to shield yourself from the spray. Wear a respirator mask to protect yourself from paint fumes when you paint. Pick your clothing carefully. Put on water repellent clothing when washing the fence, and consider wearing gloves when you paint. Clean the fence with a power washer. Fill the power washer with water, then point it at the fence. To avoid damaging the fence, move the nozzle continually. Hold it at different angles so the spray blasts dirt off all portions of the fence. If you don't own a power washer, you may be able to rent one from a home improvement store. Instead of using a power washer, 
you can scrub the fence by mixing 4 fl oz, 120 ml, of liquid dish soap in 2 us gal, 7.6 l, of water. Wait 2 days for the fence to dry completely. The fence has to be dry or else the paint may not adhere to it. Depending on how wet the fence is, this can take a while. It's not unusual to have to wait up to 2 days for the fence to feel dry to the touch. Make sure there isn't rain in the weather forecast when you begin painting, since this can also ruin your hard work. Cover up areas you don't want painted with plastic sheeting. Visit a home improvement store to pick a roll of plastic sheeting. Drape it over any parts you think the paint might reach, such as fence posts. Paint may also reach nearby walls, which you can protect by taping sheeting over them. You can protect smaller areas by covering them with masking tape. Brush a layer of paint over the fence. A stiff bristle paint brush is always useful for preparing small sections of a fence. Choose a color of paint you want for a background on your fence. Dip the brush into the paint, then drag the brush along the fence in slow, even motions. A latex paint labeled for exterior usage holds up well in outdoor weather. For quicker painting, use a paint roller or paint sprayer. If you plan on painting designs on the fence, go with a light color of paint, such as white or pale blue. It should contrast with the colors you plan on using later. Wait 4 hours for the paint to dry. Latex paint dries relatively quickly, so you can finish the base layer in one day. The paint should feel dry to the touch before you begin painting again. Make sure it doesn't feel damp or smear when you touch it. The drying time may vary depending on the weather. Humid conditions can prevent the paint from drying as quickly as normal. Coat the fence in a second layer of paint. Once the first layer has dried, go back over the entire fence again. Work on one section at a time, moving the brush in slow, even strokes. Continue until the coloring looks smooth and consistent across the fence. Let it dry again. You may need to coat the fence in another layer to perfect it. Wait for the paint to dry before you do. Your fence doesn't have to be a uniform color. Try painting each section a different color to brighten it up. Trace a design on the fence with chalk. A regular piece of white chalk should show up well on your fence and is easy to wash off when you're done. If you have a white fence, try a different color. Use the chalk to sketch anything you want to paint, such as clouds on a blue fence. You can find chalk at art supply stores. If you aren't comfortable drawing a design freehand, try cutting out a cardboard outline, then tracing it on the fence. Paint your design on the fence. Using a small paint brush, spread latex paint inside the outline. Keep your strokes short and even. Let each paint layer dry before attempting to add any additional layers or colors. If the paint looks uneven, let it dry, then add a second layer in the same color. Placing decorative items on the fence. Choose similar decorations to create a theme. Any decorations you hang need to complement each other. Usually, you want sets of decorations that have the same function and are made from similar materials. Color matching is a plus. Slapping wildly different decorations on your fence looks sloppy and detracts from uniformity. Most hanging decorations can be removed from the fence easily and replaced if you decide they don't fit. Plan out where you will hang the decorations. Sketch a basic outline of where each decoration will go. You can mark these spots in pencil, especially if you plan on putting screws or nails into the fence. Careful planning reduces the amount of work and damage done to the fence. Try to place decorations in a pattern. Give each decoration space so your fence doesn't look crowded. Hang light strands on the top of the fence. Lights are an easy way to give a fence color. Wrap a string of lights along the boards, keeping the bulbs pointed upwards and away from the fence. Plug the free end into a nearby outlet and turn them on at night to make your fence glow. Make sure the lights are safe for use outdoors and near wood. Icicle lights are a popular option, especially around some holidays. Hang garlands and wreaths around fence posts. Tie material around fence posts to easily hide them under colorful fabric. 
Garlands are way to spruce up fences for a holiday celebration. Pick a color and wrap it over the fence. Slip a wreath over the fence for extra decoration. Wreaths can also hang from nails in the fence. Another option is ribbons, which you can tie to fence posts or hang on nails. Nail hurricane lights to the fence. Hurricane lights are basically small lanterns. Set nails in the fence where you want to the hang the lights. Set the lights hook over the nail. You can use these lights to hold candles or string lights, safely illuminating the night. You can find hurricane lights online or at most general stores. These lights come in a variety of styles, but you can also try making your own. Nail signs or bird houses to the fence. These decorations are simple ways to hide a plain fence. Place the nails in the fence, then align the nail holes in the back of the decorations. Adjust them to get them level. You can also screw these to the fence. To make them easier to remove, consider installing a small mounting board first. Wrap plastic ties around the fence to make an image. For chain link fences, a unique way to color them is by wrapping materials around them. Pick up plastic cable ties from a home improvement store. Wrap the ties tightly around the chain links. Bunch them together to make unique art, such as a fish, heart, or letters. Other material can be used instead of ties. If you crochet or knit, wrap yarn around the links or tie a finished design to the fence. 